Hey, what's up folks and welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at this week's project and pull out some tips on how we design the case. So this is a little smart mirror that uses the Pi Portal. And one of the things I wanted to show is how you can optimize parts uh, when you're doing a similar type of thing. So in this case, I have a little stand and I'm attaching that with some screws and a lock nut to the main enclosure where the Pi Portal is. So if I head over to the back and remove the back cover, you can kind of see where I'm looking at here. So I got a little hexagonal kind of holder for this lock nut with a nylon insert. And what's really cool about this sort of uh, design technique is that it holds the lock nut in place so you don't have to hold it when you're attaching and inserting the screw. So the screw goes in this end and it, and it comes out this end. And if I didn't have this geometry here, I would have to use something like needle nose pliers to hold the hex nut in place uh, while fastening the screw on the other side. So what's pretty cool about this is that it prints without any support material because we have a drafted angle here at the bottom and we have enough clearance, just enough clearance for the screw to not hit uh, the, the actual PCB here. So you have a little bit of clearance there. But it's really cool because you can just uh, press fit this, uh, this lock nut, this M3 uh, lock nut into the holder that's built into the enclosure. And then when you attach um, the stand to the enclosure, you just fasten, uh, you just fasten the screw in and just kind of hold this in there. Um, and if it has a tight fitting, then you don't even have to hold it. It'll, the, the thing will just hold it for you. So that's kind of a neat uh, design approach for making really anything that attaches uh, to something else and needs a hex nut. Uh, and it worked out pretty well for this, uh, for this project. So let me create a new tab and kind of show off how, how we can make something like that. I'll start off with uh, kind of drawing a, a little box and then uh, we'll make a, a wall. So I'll just do something like 50 by 50. And then I'll extrude this out. Uh, let's say one and a half millimeters. And then I want to kind of create uh, a box. So instead of doing one and a half millimeters, let's make this the whole extent of the box. Let's say it's, uh, let's go with 12, hit OK. I'll select the top here and then just do a shell. And I'll make that shell one and a half millimeters. So I got my box now. And I'm going to go ahead and start drawing out um, you know, the hex nut holder. So you want to, depending on your case, you want to figure out which side you want it, what did you want it on. So I'm just going to do it on this side here. So I'll just kind of create a new sketch and select where I want it to be. And just to get some, uh, some geometry here, I'll select the surface again and project in that surface. And then uh, here you can see it's uh, projection linked. So that means if I ever change the dimensions of this shape, uh, this lines, this projected surface will update with it. So now uh, you can kind of either freehand where, like the position of where you want your, your hex nut to be, or it can be very precise. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll kind of do it freehand and then I'll lock it down with some dimensions. So let's go ahead and make our circle. Um, you can use this, the command C anywhere here will work just fine. I'm gonna try to keep it in the middle here. Let's make it three and a half millimeters so that the M3 screw can just pass through it. And that's kind of what I want. And then next I'll create a uh, a polygon using the subscri uh, circumscribed polygon. That's kind of the one I like to use. And I'll start, uh, I'll, I'll click in the center of our circle that we just created. That way it'll be, um, it'll be kind of locked to it. So at this point, um, you can see like as I drag it out, I can, I can see that the, the dimensions are changing. And in this case, I'm going to make it three millimeters and then hit OK. So the dimension here is just half of the full length. So from this line to this line is actually six millimeters. Um, but here you can see it's only three. So what we can do is you can either delete that, and then you can add a new uh, sketch dimension by selecting and holding down Shift and selecting both of those, those lines. And then I'll add a dimension by hitting uh, the hotkey D. And then there you can see I'm starting to create that. So if I ever wanted to change it, let's say I want 5.6, for example, I can do that. <clears throat> now, you'll see that as I move the circle, now the circumscribed polygon is going with me, but there's some weirdness going on. So what I want to do is I want to lock this one of these, I want to apply a horizontal uh, or vertical constraint to one of these lines. And 
you want to think about your printing orientation. So in this case, uh, this will be the bottom, and I kind of don't want a flat surface. So like if, if, if I was printing this out, your printer could do it, but I think it'd be better if you had a point going straight up. That way, that this these two lines kind of face up as a as a as a as opposed to you know having a flat surface and 90 degree overhang. So let's pick this line here to be horizontally or vertically constrained. So I'll just pick that and now it is always going to be uh, vertically constrained. So I can just about free move this wherever I want. And uh, you can see here that this 5.6 is going to be uh, pretty much wherever I go. So if I select these two just to confirm, yeah, it's 5.6. So even though it looks like this is not out of the place, uh, it, it is not. But we could always delete it too, you know, and then add a new one just to kind of get some sanity here. So this is 5.6. All right, that looks good. Now it's you can move it wherever we want. Um, so that depends on where you want it. So let's say I wanted it to be in the center of this whole thing. I could uh, use the line tool and then one of these edges here, I can just roll over until I get that triangle. That triangle, that's means the mid point constraint. So I'll click that and then I'll follow through the other side and do the same thing. Right when I see that triangle, I know that it's locking to the middle of that line. So whenever I change, uh, let's say the, 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 the height of this uh, case, this, will, this line will always be in the center. Now that I have it selected, let's go ahead and make it a construction line uh, by hitting the either hitting the, the hotkey X on my keyboard or uh, using this, this button here that's it's very hard to see <laughs> for some reason. So I'm going to hit the X key and you'll see it makes it a dotted line. That way it's just, it's just being used as a reference uh, line and not something that will cut through our profile. Now what I can do is I can grab this line here and with it selected, I'll hold down shift and select that dotted line. I'll bring up my uh, sketch shortcuts window with the S key and then I'll make it midpoint. And watch what happens when I click that midpoint, it'll bring it right in the middle. So it is in the absolute middle of this line. And then this line is in the middle of this line. So everything's kind of in the middle. So if you wanted your attachment bit to be in the exact center of this, of this uh, surface here, then this is how you would do it. So let's hit finish sketch and then let's start making some extrusions. So I'll select my circle. I'll want it to go this way out. So instead of adding a dimension, let's go ahead and do some, uh, some smarts here where I say uh, the extent type, let's make it two object and I'll select this surface. So it goes from that profile to that surface. And if the thickness ever changes, that'll change as well because it's always going to this surface. So I'll hit okay. And the next up, we'll do another extrusion. But I've just noticed that I need to do a little bit of work to my thing here. If I were to extrude this, then where would the hex nut be, right? So I actually need to make an offset to this uh, to this uh, this thing. So I'll go back into my sketch by double clicking it, and it's really easy to do an offset of a thing um, because this shape is like a chain, a loopable chain. I could just hit the hotkey O. O is for offset, and you can see I need to select it. So if your chain selection is checked on, then that means you can select just this whole shape here. And you can see it's already doing um, a nice offset for me. So uh, what you want to do is probably use the same number uh, that we used for the shell when we shelled this out. That was one and a half millimeters and I'll hit OK. All right, so now I can start extruding. So I'll just hit the E key on my keyboard and then how much we want to make this. It depends on how thick or how deep you want your hex net to be. I'm gonna go with uh, two millimeters is fine for this one. And that's kind of it for that. So I've extruded it out, but now what I wanna do is I want to optimize these edges here, some of these surfaces, because right now the printer is gonna struggle on uh, printing this out because it, it, is, it, is, it is an overhang, even though it's got um, some sort of uh, it's still going to struggle a little bit. So what we can do is we can use the draft edges uh, feature to draft those edges. So uh, in my shortcuts window, I'll just type in draft. I'll select that. And what you want to do is for the pull direction, you want to select the surface that you are going to pull. It's always a little bit backwards. So I'm going to hit select the face that I want to be um, 
drafted and it's going to be these two bottom ones, it's a little hard to kind of see it. Um, so we could do a cross section and I recommend doing that because it's really hard to see. So let's do a cross section. So under inspect, I'll click on that and then I'll select one of these surfaces here and then I'll use the, uh, the arrow to kind of pull so I can get in there. Um, I kind of will change the orientation of it so that I can kind of do one of these views where I can see kind of half of it. I think that'll work better. I think that will be okay. So let's hit okay. And that gives us a little bit better view. So back to the design shortcuts window, we'll select draft, click on that faces and we'll select this face here, rotate around. And I think I could just about get under here and then uh, hold down the command on Mac or probably control on PC to do a, it's kind of a, a multi-selection of those two surfaces. So we got our faces selected. Now we need to pull that direction. And the surface to do that is actually this front facing surface here. So I'll click on that. And now I have a little handle as to which I can start uh, pulling this. So let's make it 45 degrees. And you can see here as I'm doing that, um, it's kind of eating into or merging into the bottom floor plane there. And you can see I'm, I'm getting a little bit of extra geometry there. So you want to be aware of that but I'll hit OK, and that tend to have kind of went away automatically, which is, which is nice for us, and now we don't have to delete those. But that's a good way to kind of see that uh, when you have some overhang, you can use that draft um, edges feature uh, to optimize the jump for printing better. Um, yeah, and then um, because of the way this is printing out, uh, we don't have to draft these edges here. These edges can be f uh, flat, but that's kind of what you want to do. Now, the next thing I'll do is maybe play around a little bit with like the height. Let's say I want to go uh, 16 millimeters. If I update that feature, um, Fusion will calculate all that again, and you'll see that our, our, uh, our mounting hole is actually um, exactly in the middle because we have that midpoint constraint. And that means if we were to extend um, the dimension of the case itself, let's say we made it longer, let's make that 100 millimeters, you can see it'll always be in the center. And that is sort of the power of combining um, the midpoint constraint uh, with uh, a coincident constraint, let's say, for this case. Um, so that's cool. Um, from here we can do like, we can mirror it if we want. Um, if you wanted to find uh, the center of this of this case here, you can do that very easily with a construction plane, the mid plane right here. It lets you select one surface, another surface, and then it'll find and calculate the middle of those two surfaces. Now we can use this, um, this construction plane as a, uh, as a reference point to create our mirror. So let me go ahead and type in mirror. I wanna do the type as a feature. I want um, this extrusion, this extrusion, I gotta hold down command or something. These, there we go. I deselected the one of them, and I can select those three items uh, in my timeline. You can see a little preview of it. it. Looks green, and then my mirror plane is already selected. I'll hit OK, and it gave me a little error there. Uh, let's read the error. It says compute failed. No target body. It looked fine to me. Fusion will sometimes do that. Yeah, it doesn't like it for some reason. Let me see if it. Uh, it's there though, it's happened. I don't know why Fusion's freaking out. Um, but it looks fine to me. Oh, it didn't do the, uh, the extrusion because the extrusion over here was set to, um, you know, to, to be uh, the extent type set to object. So in that case, let's go back into the mirror and instead of features, let's try faces. And then I'll uh, deselect that and then select these three things. Um, let me just select them manually, these surfaces then. It shouldn't be that difficult, but sometimes it is. <laughs> All right, that looks like the, the hole is going to be a part of it. Let's hit OK. Still didn't do it. <laughs> oh, gosh, Fusion. You are not making it fun. So let me uh, go back into that extrusion that made the hole. And then instead of extent type two object, we're trying to be fancy and parametric. Let's just put distance, leave it at negative 1.5 because that is the right number we want. And then when we mirror it, let's go back to features. 
and then I'll select those uh, those features here the extrude the extrude and the draft let's see if that works and that worked yeah you just have to understand like what is actually going on when you're mirroring if you have those sort of uh, special things like two object it will just not do it um, but you know you could be smart and then say you could use um, instead of using a hard-coded number here we could have created a user parameter and said thickness and then that way when we created our shell we could have made this hard-coded value into a user parameter and that way we could uh, retain that parametric ability but you can always go back in and change it but that's a quick look at how you can make some optimized geometry for attaching one thing to another thing uh, and a little bit of work on troubleshooting mirrors and fusion and uh, just a good lesson in using the circumscribe uh, tool and the draft edges tool. So check out the project here. Um, I got a, a couple things here that are they're pretty interesting you can check out. Um, this 3D model of the Pi Portal is available through download as well. It's got all the onboard components. Uh, I'll give a little promotion to the Learn Guide as well. If you want to pick up the Pi Portal, they are in stock. And you can create this smart mirror project. Um, it connects uh, over Wi-Fi. And this Pi Portal is fully featured. If you ever want to do anything with the display and IoT projects, this is definitely the way to go. And then the CAD parts are over here on our GitHub repo at github.com slash Adafruit slash Adafruit underscore CAD parts. Check this out. If you have a parts request, you can always add them to the issues tab and I'll post up when I get through them. But uh, the way it works is you just search for the PID. In this case, I could just type in Pi Portal and you can see all the Pi Portals that are here. You can see you got the Titano, the Pint, and the regular classic Pi Portal. You can download it in a step file, Fusion 360 file, and an STL. So check this out. That's going to do it for this tutorial. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I'll see you next time. But until then, remember to make a great day. Bye, folks.